Good morning, everyone. Uh, afternoon, everyone. Good morning in Chile. And uh, welcome to our new webinar from uh, the series of uh, the Connectio uh, Preparatory Missions. Um, my name is Sandra Cabrera. I'm the project lead of the Connectio project. Just to give you a brief overview, the Connectio project uh, is a EU funded project aimed to assist uh, the European SMEs uh, uh, selected um, by, um, uh, by Connectio uh, to, um, to assist them in their efforts in um, internationalization, especially in the markets of Chile and Australia in the sectors of agriculture and maritime. Today, I have the pleasure to, uh, to present you Christian Sagal from Invest Chile. He's going uh, to explain us uh, the Chilean agriculture sector and the use of uh, observation technologies. As we are um, not so many, we're a few, um, a few, uh, uh, few assistants. Um, we decided to make it as uh, friendly as possible. So uh, Christian and me as well would like to know uh, more about you, uh, to know your as well your your needs, your sector, uh, maybe your application in general terms. So I encourage you, and I would like uh, if you could uh, introduce uh, yourself your company or your institution that you represent and your um, your offer or your needs so um if you may i would like to start with of course the people that i know from connectio so um please i will name um if no volunteer i will name uh, isabel if you are there. Hopefully your microphone works and everything works. And I need to give you the rights. Samuel, are you there? Or should I skip? I don't I don't hear Isabel, so I will skip with Guy. Yes. Hi. Yes. Hi. Yes. I'm Guy Serbin. Um, I um, I'm CEO of EO Analytics Limited. We're a very small Dublin-based company specializing in agriculture, agricultural and environmental remote sensing. Um, at the moment, we are looking for projects mainly for development, things like that, collaborative research, and that kind of work, um, and product development. Thank you. Um, I then will move with Jan. Hello, everybody. My name is Jan um, from World from Space, a company from Brno, Czech Republic. Uh, we're focused uh, on agriculture monitoring with, with the satellites. We have operational product called Dynacrop, which is helping farm management software companies to integrate of observation products at scale uh, and uh, very small price. And we're also working on uh, environmental monitoring. Uh, at the moment, we are discussing uh, with the Santiago de Chile on uh, on some park monitoring. So. Uh, we'll be very happy to understand more of the Chile, and we're still looking forward to meeting you in person if the <laughs> project will manage to <laughs> to organize uh, organize the, the personal visits. So I'm mostly looking forward to understand uh, the agriculture sector, what kind of uh, software integrators or large integrators in the food productions are there, uh, and uh, what is the level of, of observation product adoption at the moment. Thank you. Um, I will move on with now on the order of, of appearance of my screen, um, Felipe. 
Um, oh, hello. Let, let me turn on my camera. <laughs> hello, everyone. My, my name is Felipe Lizana. I'm a consultant on working with the World Bank's uh, uh, Agriculture and Food Group Global Practice. And uh, we are like deeply interested in how like the, like the agriculture innovation uh, sector is working in, in Chile. And well, uh, thank you for the invitation and we're looking forward to, to work with, well, with Invest Chile and the government on how to better develop the innovation like uh, sector in, in the country. And uh, I'm looking forward to the discussion. Thank you. Alessandra? We cannot hear you. Hi. Oh. Hi. Hi. Good afternoon, everybody. Good morning, <laughs> based on where you are located. Um, I'm Alessandra Bleve. I work for uh, Planet Tech Italia. It is an Italian company with more than 28 years experience in earth observation and satellite um, monitoring services. Uh, and I'm here today because I'd like to know more about the agriculture um, needs, actually, because we have a service that is uh, called Reticus Agriculture. And, um, well, yeah, I'd like to understand more this, um, uh, the sector itself and how it works in Chile. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alejandra. Thank you. You're welcome. And welcome. Um, I um, apologize if I mispronounce this name. Nastasia? Short? Uh, hello. Uh, one, one second. Uh, yeah, Nastasia is fine. Yeah, it's a Russian name, but I'm from Germany. <laughs> uh, I work for the University of Potsdam, and uh, I have very similar uh, interests in uh, the, the ones stated uh, previously um, at the University of Potsdam. I lead the so-called joint lab of uh, for UAV and sensorics, which uh, is uh, focusing on projects in the mostly in the agricultural and environmental monitoring uh, section. And I'm interested in uh, in collaborating in, uh, in projects in uh, in South America, especially Chile and Argentina. And so, uh, I'm really interested in what you have to say, and um, yeah, the other other participants' interests. And uh, I, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> um, Thank you. Thanks so much, um, Eduardo. Hello, do you hear me? Yes. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm Eduardo Gorge. I am the general manager for Siemens in South America without Brazil. Normally I'm sitting in Chile today, I'm visiting Buenos Aires. And uh, thank you, Christian, for, for inviting. My, my, my interest is actually to, to learn both from, the, from Invest Chile and also the uh, possible startups or people that want to invest, what are the needs of this sector in particular? We work on infrastructure and automation for almost any industry, but uh, we are looking forward to learn uh, what this sector in particular agriculture needs for, for investment in, in Chile, but also in the rest of the countries in South America. Thank you. Thank you, Eduardo, and welcome. Thank you. Um, the next one in my screen, Carolina. So, Carolina, you think you're, um, yeah, we are introducing ourselves very quickly. Yeah, I, I noticed that. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for the invitation. I work for Icon Geo. We are a leading earth observation company in Ireland and agriculture sector. So, for us, it would be very interested to learn what Chile needs and how could earth observation help them in agriculture? Thank you, Carolina. Um, the next to my screen is France. Hi, everybody. Christian, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo estás? Um, I work at the Dutch Embassy. Um, I am responsible for the uh, theme of water. And uh, coincidentally, we just started to do a study um, on how we can reduce water footprint in, in a technological fashion in agriculture. 
Um, and Thomas Arenera, he was uh, also participating, is going to execute this study for us. Um, as you know, the Dutch are very advanced, uh, like many of the people I see here in the in the call participating on uh, on agricultural technology. Um, and we are trying to find out what specifically with regards to technological and IoT, SAS, etc., uh, solutions is needed in Chile so we can see whether there's any um, uh, opportunity for Dutch companies to, to invest and come to Chile. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Alexandru? Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I just joined the um, uh, Romanian uh, Earth Observation Company, Terra Signa, that is traditionally has some um, uh, activities in various uh, countries around uh, South America. And as agriculture is uh, now one of our um, uh, priorities, I would like to learn how can we further develop the already uh, knowledge and relationship that we have in that uh, in that region so um, i will uh, look forward to uh, understand uh, which are the challenges uh, in agriculture specifically uh, and how can we combine um, agriculture knowledge earth observation big data um, IT platforms, all this kind of stuff. Um, insurance, if you have as well, maybe. That's a big challenge <laughs> in, in the region that I am. And um, thank you very much. Thank you. Flavia? Yes, hello everyone. Good afternoon. Um, I'm Flavia from the Remote Sensing Solutions Company. Uh, we are based in Munich in Germany, and we are for more or less 20 years uh, in the market of uh, earth observation and working with many, many kinds of fields. And I'm here because uh, I would like to understand a little bit more the, the market in Chile. We have some business already in Brazil regarding the agriculture, principally in the, in the, in the regarding of, um, of drought monitoring and also crop monitoring there. And as I'm from Brazil, I don't have so many contacts in Chile. So I would love to understand a little bit more the market and what are the needs and how we can combine these earth observation companies from Europe and now also the local knowledge with the local companies and also the local community. So how we can engage together to, to try to face all the challenges that we have uh, in the agriculture sector. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thomas? there. In the meantime, I'm going to um, uh, to mention that Isabel, she can she she cannot um, uh, speak because her microphone is, is, is not working. But I just want to introduce uh, Isabel. Um, she's from Quantec. Uh, she's located in Spain and she's working on a remote sensing uh, application in the field of agriculture in risk assessment in the case of drought, And of course, they are looking uh, into the Chilean market as well. So um, um, if Tomas is not there yet or is not available, I just uh, want to uh, introduce, now that you know, all, well, more or less, uh, you know already all of you, I also would like to encourage you to uh, take the most uh, advantage of this online um, online method, and if, uh, of course, in a in a in a room where we will we will have in a physical room, of course, probably you will swap cards or you will exchange contacts. So if you can, if, if you're interested in what was one does or in each other, so do not hesitate as well to use the chat and send direct messages. Also, um, please, uh, uh, if you would like as well to sh that we share uh, your contacts with uh, Christian as he requested, 
let us know just typing in the chat yes and uh without further ado do not hesitate as well of course to uh to send your your questions on the chat and well to interrupt him <laughs> and without further ado i will uh leave the floor to christian thank you thank you so much uh, sandra and uh, welcome everyone everybody today's uh Beginners uh, act tech for Chile. Uh, I know some of you. I know that France. I believe France knows much more than <laughs> than the rest of you because he's living in Chile and working with in the water sector. Uh, but okay, uh, the idea is that please feel free to interrupt me whenever you want. Uh, ask questions as we're just few people. This is we're trying to make this uh, very dynamic. Uh, I'm not a very technical person in terms of the the ag tech sector, but I will try to explain you what is the context uh, right now, what are the main challenges and how it's uh, characterized the agricultural sector. So I will start with the presentation. Let me know if you see it in a presentation mode right now. It's okay, right? Okay, uh, well, Invest Chile is the, uh, a government agency that helps and boost people or, or companies that want to expand their business into our country and we help them uh, to look for certain kind of information regarding the market, the statistic, how they labored, uh, how much it, it costs to, to hire a, a person here, uh, how, what, what are the subsidies or benefits to, to enter the market, uh, how can we connect them with the ecosystem. And we are part of the economics uh, ministry. My name is Christian Sagal, and, and I'm part of the I'm in charge of the food industry here. Uh, we're going to start from the very basic uh, for the people that doesn't know much about Chile. Chile is uh, it's very well known abroad for its poetry. You know Pablo Neruda, Gabriela Mistral. But we also have two Oscars, uh, only two Oscars in, in our history that were uh, awarded not many years ago. Uh, and that's, that's about Chile. That's pretty much what Chile is known. Uh, maybe football, not, not so much nowadays. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just letting people get inside. Um, but also... Wait. Boom, 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 boom. But also because of uh, its natural disaster, we we just faced the the biggest earthquakes in in the world history, and we recovered. Uh, we had tsunamis. We also had volcanoes, and that's part of, of the nature of Chile. That's part of uh, our uh, DNA. Uh, Chile is a long country. You can uh, you can easily tell which country is Chile because it has a length of four hundred four thousand uh, two hundred kilometers. Uh, if you put uh, Chile in, in, in another context, in, for example, uh, United States, you can see how long it is. It goes from uh, uh, east to, to west in, in, in the United States. It has a, a high diversity, diversity of climates and uh, it's considered a phytosanitary island because you have the Cordillera on one side, you have the ocean to another side, you have, the, you have in the, up in the north the driest desert, and down in the south, you have the, um, the Antarctica. If you put Chile in another context, in, in European, in Europe, you, it goes from Sweden down to almost Egypt. It's very long. So it's the logistical part, it's, it's kind of complicated. It's not so easy as it is in, in Europe. Uh, another context, it goes from Germany to almost uh, Nigeria in, um, in, in Africa. So it's it, just to give you an idea, uh, of the size and the surface of the of the country. With that that being said, you will notice that we have a huge uh, difference of the climate. Meanwhile, in the up in the north, you have the the driest desert. Uh, you have in the middle of Chile the Mediterranean, pretty much uh, um, uh, climate, and down in the south you have the rainy part of the country. In the yellow part, it, it's where all the um, concentration of the agricultural sector is located, where you will find all the annual and biennial crops, where you will find the uh, fruit uh, trees. Um, if you go a little bit down in the south, you will find all, all of the uh, 
the timber part, the, the wood part, and which is part of our, our export uh, as well. But uh, just to give you, as, as you are in a, a startup sometimes or SMEs, uh, you send people here. Don't only come for, for the business because we have a big part of uh, tourism here. You can be up in the mountain in the, in the morning skiing, and then in the, in the, within the same day, you can be at the beach uh, surfing. We have, uh, the, you can see the, the, the diverse uh, climates that we have. Uh, Eastern Island is part of Chile as well, if you, didn't, if you were not aware of that. Um, okay, let, let's go to the Chilean part of the economy. Uh, we say it is a sound economy. Why? Uh, because our GDP, it's uh, worth in 2020, 253 uh, billion US dollars. Uh, we have the highest uh, uh, GDP per capita in, uh, in, in South America, in Latin America, we're the number two with uh, 25,000 US dollars. Uh, it, our exports are higher than our imports. Um, we have a population of 19.1 million people. Uh, still, it's a small country, but think about Chile as a place to export, uh, as export platform, where you can base your uh, company and uh, go to the rest of Latin America from Chile. Uh, well, the corporate, the interest rate, it's right now it's a 5.5%. This is due of the pandemia, of the all the international crisis that we're suffering. Uh, if you go back to 19, um, 2019, it was 0.5%. So it, it, it shows that the, this has changed because of the pandemic. Same with the inflation. Uh, from 2010 to 2019, the average was 3.1%. It was a very healthy economic system. But nowadays, it's 7.2%. I think this is the worldwide uh, thing that is happening in most of the countries. So there is nothing to be scared of. Uh, we are a country that receives a lot of uh, FDI, foreign direct investment, of course. And we, are, we take care of, of those companies coming into the country. Why? Because we know they, they will pay their taxes here, but also because there is a technological transfer uh, to our people here. Um, the corporate rate, it's uh, 27%, 35 for the foreigners. We have double uh, treaty, uh, double taxation agreements with some countries. We will have to review that if you uh, fit into those uh, agreements. And the FDI stock, uh, it's uh, 276 billion US dollars. We are considered to, we, we like to think about ourselves uh, as the number one global player in Latin America. Uh, we're the most, uh, we've been the most competitive nation in Latin America since 1998, according to uh, the World Economic Forum. Uh, we were the first country entering the OECD. Uh, we have one of the highest uh, GDP per capita, and it's, it's, we have, uh, a, it's very easy to do business in Chile. The tax uh, system, it works very well and it's very easy to understand. It's very similar to what, what's happening in, in Europe. And we are the uh, number one country with economic freedom. We have more than 30 free trade agreements with the rest of the world. And uh, it's very easy to import as well as to export. When you are a small country, you have to be part of what, what the world is. Uh, we have a robust foreign investment regime. Uh, that means that we have equal treatment. Um, we don't we don't make any difference between uh, foreign companies and uh, national companies. Uh, they have the same rules. They have, uh, we play the same game. You are eligible to apply for, for the same subsidies when you are foreign or when you are a foreigner or you are a national company. Uh, we have a free, play, uh, free flow of capital and profits. That means you can take your money out of the country whenever you want after paying your taxes. Uh, that's that's very easy to do as well as in and it, the, as, as I told you before it's we have a very simple tax structure uh, you can have your company based and running within 45 days that's a, the, the, the hard way but um, you can also have it within one day for simple uh, companies structure um, right now we are changing uh, as you may know uh, in March 11 a new government will assume uh, but under Piñera's government, 
we had a very pro investment uh, agenda and I believe we will continue the same um, road that we were having before. We know that we depend a lot of, of, the, in the, of, of the foreign uh, direct investment. But why Chile? Uh, as I told you before, we like to think about ourselves as, as an ongoing leadership in the region. We have an entrepreneurial environment. I don't know if you have heard about the Startup Chile. It's one of the largest accelerators, uh, public accelerators in, 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 in the world. Uh, they receive many companies uh, from all over the world every day. Um, where uh, you can find also high level talent. We have uh, one of the best universities in South America. Uh, we like to think of ourselves as a Latin American hub. And also we are a tech and sustainable leader. Everything is changing to the sustainable concept. Uh, we have several different laws that are changing how we do business in Chile, taking more care about the, uh, the environment. Let's go to the agri sector, which, which is, what is gathering us today. We are an, an export country. Uh, this is a basic map of uh, FOB um, prices of our export value and of what we export uh, today. You will see that our export are, are based mainly over the mining sector, but also you will notice that fruit and nuts represents an important part of the market share, as well as the seafood and, uh, and wine growing and other food and beverage. Um, if you think about Chile, think about mining and agriculture. That, that's basically the country. That's the basic of our economics. Recently, we, the, the uh, food safety index, sorry for, for that, uh, just uh, was just uh, published. Uh, this is something that uh, the economist uh, does every year. And uh, we are the number one in South America. Um, we have an agency that is called Achipia that takes care of the quality and um, of, of the food that we produce, uh, taking care that uh, all of the the the, the assurance it's it's in uh, within uh, what the destiny markets are requiring. Um, trustability is the key the key part of uh, what companies are looking now because uh, the destiny, the markets in destiny, uh, China, the US and Europe are requesting for that. Um, how, how it, I'm sorry that this is in Spanish, um, but this is, I wanted to, to show you and share with you how it, it's composed, the, the surface of Chile. Uh, you will notice it, it was a very long uh, country and it, the sizes of the land are very small, around 74 to 75% of the land are less than 20 hectares. Uh, so um, you will notice that many of the fruit uh, export companies or any other fruit processing company where they grow their, 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 their food or whatever crop they're growing, is going to be less than 20 hectares usually for the food industry. So it's the logistical part, it becomes very a bit tricky because you have 20 hectares in one part, you have 20 hectares in other part. And um, sometimes uh, when you want to be more efficient in terms of the um, production, it becomes really hard. Uh, hopefully you can see this, uh, this slide. Uh, this is the planted area that we had uh, we have in Chile. Uh, I'm, I'm going to focus on on the uh, fruit trees. You will see why after. Uh, you can see that we produce everything from almonds, blueberry, hazelnut, cherries, prunes, apricots, raspberry, kiwis, lemons. Uh, we have a, a large variety uh, of uh, different um, products, but focus in it, blueberries, hazelnut, and cherries. Look how much it has uh, grown. This this uh, the surface that we have in Chile, the planted area, uh, from uh, the twenty the 20, oh, 2008 till uh, twenty eighteen, and this continues growing. Uh, we export the blueberries and the hazelnuts go mainly goes mainly to Europe and the United States. Uh, meanwhile, the cherries are going basically uh, to, to China, which is the main destiny of uh, our exports today. 
but also put attention to Mandarin. They, they continue growing. Why? Because the free trade agreement that we have with, with China, uh, we included the Mandarins and that boosted a lot of the, that part of, um, of that product from our economy. Uh, as I told you, what, what we export are mainly grapes, cherries, apples, and blueberries. The destinies for, for those um, fresh fruit uh, are uh, the first one is China, the second one is uh, the, US, the US, and the third one would be the European Union. But we also have uh, dry fruits. Where, where you will find uh, the almonds, uh, walnuts, that the are a big part of our uh, dry fruits um, sector as well. See, you, you will see the, the cherries, the mandarins also, again, what how much they, they grew from uh, passing to um, the variation is uh, uh, 385%, I, I will mark it right here. Uh, it's over there. And also the mandarins, they grew 803%. But look, look at what happened with the hazelnuts. Hazelnuts, it's basically because we are being the, we, we, we produce in counter season for, for the Northern Hemisphere. And what happened recently is that Ferrero, the Italian company, and some of the, um, the uh, oh, I forgot the name of the, the other companies in the other country. It's uh, the second com country that exports uh, um, the hazelnuts. It's uh, Turkey. Turkey. It what well, it grow it grew. Look at that percentage. I, I will not even name it, but it's growing a lot. Uh, that's going to the south of, of, of Chile. Uh, which are the main players, uh, the companies that are looking for a solution on, on how, to, how to optimize the process. Uh, this is the season 2019-2020. Uh, what happened is that uh, Chile is now facing some uh, different problems that I will tell you in the next slides. But uh, these companies are investing in innovation, most of them. And they are contacting different startups uh, to, to look over how to be more efficient in terms of the water use and the processing, how to know when to fertilize, when to apply some of uh, other products, and uh, how to go from the, from the country, the, from, from the field, to the table of the consumer. Uh, the, uh, the water footprint is something very important nowadays in every market. And Chileans are aware of that. That's why uh, I put this, uh, this uh, few uh, export companies that are really looking forward to, to meet with, with the, some of the, the startups that can offer some of the solutions to monetize and, and to give a better uh, solution to what they're facing today. Um, I put uh, another one in the, your right side hand, which is called Hortifrut. They are one of the largest berries exporters in, in Chile. They export pretty much everything to the, to the U.S. And they are investing a lot of in, in innovation. Uh, they are running some pilots with uh, foreign companies, foreign startups that are, are looking to offer what they have uh, to the Chilean market. Another big part of the Chilean uh, agri sector is the wine industry. We have more than 12, uh, 200,000 hectares in, in Chile, and uh, we are a large exporter of uh, wine. And also one of the main challenges that uh, we're facing today in Chile in every sector is the use of the water. Why? Because we're facing a huge uh, drought uh, of that has come for the last 10 years and we are starting to see the consequences of not being conscious of the, in, in the use of the water. Some of the main uh, exporters in, in, within the wine industry are Contitoro, Viña San Pedro, and Cono Sur. They are also running some pilots with uh, startups and they are already using some of the the uh, solutions that they, they can offer, going from uh, machine learning, going from uh, uh, in, in artificial intelligence, and going from uh, big data, and so on. 
Uh, why I focus uh, so much in the um, in the fruit industry, it's because uh, the data from the census that was carried just last year, we still don't have the result. Uh, this was uh, published just yesterday, and it, it proves that uh, pretty much all of the sectors uh, in, in terms of the surface agricultural area uh, decrease, but only the only one that uh, that increased their uh, surface area were, were the fruit. I'm sorry, this is in Spanish. I, I'm trying to, if you can see where I'm pointing out there, it increased 23%. If you compare the data from 20, uh, 2007 and 2021, is the only one that increased in a, in a big part of, of the market share. That's why it's so important today to go for those kind of uh, to offer the, uh, this kind of service for the Actec to that kind of um, companies. And as, as I told you, what are the main challenges? Today we're facing a drought and we need to look for solutions on uh, to offer uh, to the companies on how to irrigate, when to irrigate, and, uh, and, and uh, what is the most uh, efficient way, way to irrigate. Going from up in the north, to the south of Chile, uh, basically, where we from where we obtain the water in Chile is that we have the mountains. Whenever it rains, it is snow. The snow stays there stuck, and when it comes the summer, you get all the water going running and down to the to the valley, and then it in, it in that in, ends up in the in the ocean, the what the the water, the um, sweet water. But today we're Truly, it's, it's, a, it's a huge uh, challenge that we have uh, uh, ahead of us. The other part is that still labor here, it's very uh, cheap. Uh, big part of what is uh, the, the harvest in, in Chile, it's been, uh, it, it's, they're using a lot of uh, labor. They, they don't use a lot of uh, machinery. So uh, that's also a challenge and uh, because we're suffering now that the, the salaries are getting better in the cities and people is migrating from the country to the city, we're facing that uh, it's hard to find workers and to, that do, does that kind of a work. Uh, where we receive um, some kind, in some degree of migrants, but still it's not, they're not evil, a, able to cover uh, all of the stages of the harvest part. That's one of the other uh, challenges that we have. And uh, the last one is that uh, we have uh, we have a potential of uh, to, to to cultivate land of uh, 30, 31 million of hectares, from which uh, I would say that uh, one million of hectares are irrigated, and from that million of uh, hectares that are irrigated, only one third uses. Uh, uh, technological uh, irrigation systems. The other one are using just the water just like that. So you will see that if you want to continue being a sustainable country and to continue exporting this kind of product to the rest of the world, we will have to change our mentality and we need to look for new solutions. Um, but the Ministry of Agriculture just, we changed our motto from going, we, we were, the, the motto before was to be the uh, supplier for the world, but they, they now notice, okay, no, no, we cannot continue like that. We need to uh, make a differentiation, differentiation from the rest of the world, and we may have to make sustainable what we are producing. That's why uh, we need to find out what are the uh, sustainable solutions that we can find from um, supply chains to the rest of the world. Now, in the case of the Actec, we have several different uh, companies that are acting in, in our market. Of course, uh, I, I truly believe there is still a, a big space to new technologies, to new companies, because uh, one of the problems also that we have is that sometimes it's, it's hard to, to change the mentality of the farmers to start using this kind of technology. 
some of the, the success cases that we have foreign companies, if you see to the, your left-hand side, you will see Kilimo, which is a, an Argentinian company uh, that uses big data and takes samples of the soil in order to uh, know how much irrigate and they have some kind of uh, IoT also. Uh, they use IoT, a space AGG. Uh, it's a Peruvian company that also is uh, using a space uh, photograph to monitorize uh, what is happening in, in the um, in the field. Also, CETIS, which is a US company in Terranis, which I believe it's part of uh, your uh, group. Uh, they are from France. They have a small uh, um, team here. Uh, but also we have uh, some uh, national companies that uh, are going from Chile to abroad. Uh, one good example is Instacrops, uh, Neltume, Modular, Polynatural, which uh, they're using basically a natural wax in order to uh, extend the shell life of the products. Agrurbana, they have this vertical kind of, 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 um, of uh, growing tomatoes and Austral Falcon. Uh, the advantage that represents uh, being in Chile for these companies is that uh, it's very easy to go from Chile, which is a kind of a small market, but you will see that most of what is cultivated here in Chile, it's also cultivated in Peru. So it's easy to go from Chile to Peru and uh, in, get a bigger market. If you have those two uh, countries, you will have a big, um, a big opportunity to, to be sustainable. Uh, what is the ecosystem and the venture capital? Venture capital has played a big role uh, for these kind of companies because they, they went from series A to B and C and they, are, they keep continuing growing. But also there, there are some public institutions that uh, help you out uh, for you as a foreign company to go uh, to come here and continue. Um, for example, there is a startup Chile, which is uh, this accelerator uh, that helps, and you can apply for that if you are at a startup, you have the size of a startup, and they will help you to uh, have a better pitch to connect with investors and, and so on. You also have Pro Chile, which is the agency that boosts uh, the, the exports from Chile to the rest of the world, Invest Chile, where I work. Also, Corfo that has uh, some subsidies that can help you uh, to navigate through the, the ecosystem. FIA, which is the foundation of innovation, the agrarian innovation that also has some kind of subsidies for new solutions and innovations in the, in the, in the, in the ecosystem. And uh, the Ministry of Agriculture that uh, has this irrigation law, which is a subsidy for the farmers that boost the way they uh, irrigate their lands, uh, it looks for to um, have technological systems uh, within their, their land. Uh, so they can use, uh, they, they can have a better use of the, of the usage of the water. And in terms of the private associations, we as Invest Chile, we cannot put you in contact with the private uh, companies because of a uh, thing of the transparency of the state. But what we can do is to help you to explore and, and to, to show your, your solutions to these kind of private uh, institutions, which is ASOEX, that's uh, the main and uh, largest uh, association for, for fruit exports, uh, Chile Nuts, the same, but for dry fruit, Wines of Chile, and Feda Leche. I, I didn't talk so much about the dairy sector and the, uh, the fish sector, but those are also sectors that are very important in terms of uh, looking for new solutions and innovation. Th th that's, a, that's a big market as well. Uh, for the, in the size of uh, the venture capitals, you will find Agfander, the Yildaf, Arpeggio, Alerce, Endeavor, and Genesis Ventures. They are all, all the time looking uh, for startups to uh, invest in those startups and help them to scale up to the rest of the region. Uh, in terms of what we do in, at Invest Chile, uh, as I told you before, we are a government agency that promotes Chile. Um, we advise every year more than 700 companies. Uh, we have uh, several different um, services. If you're planning to come to Chile, please let us know. Uh, 
uh, know, we will help you out with the agenda to contact with the different associations. Uh, we are, this year we're putting an extra effort to the ag tech sector because we know we have a huge uh, challenge ahead of us and the Chilean companies, the, the export companies are looking to be in contact with this kind of technology. Um, we invite you to uh, review our website uh, our, um, our, uh, we have some videos at, and, and YouTube where you can subscribe to uh, our newsletter. And uh, also we have some uh, eBooks online where you can find uh, this information uh, more in depth. Uh, we have a, a food industry um, a food uh, eBook where you can uh, free download that. And uh, you can have more information over what I just went through. Of course, this was a very uh, beginner's uh, introduction. The idea is that you can send me all of the uh, questions that you may have, and we will help you out to prospect what's happening in the market. And if you have an opportunity here, uh, of course, we will try to help you as much as we can. Uh, thank you. If you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, the idea right now is that we can start a, a conversation. Uh, free, feel free to ask me whatever you want. If there is one data you didn't get uh, because of the accent, because of my English or whatever, <laughs> just let me know. Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Christian. So I've seen a couple of questions. So I will start with Jan. Uh, he asked, are the largest food companies owned by local actors or by multinational companies? Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Jan. Well, we have uh, both. Uh, the largest one, of course, you have all the multinationals such as Nestle, we have Diana Food, uh, among others. Uh, pretty much all of the large multinational companies are in Chile. And why they're in Chile? Because they are part of uh, what we call the export platform. Um, but also we have part of, uh, of national companies. Uh, it depends where are you looking at. Uh, if you look at uh, processed food, I would say that most of them are uh, foreign companies. If you tell me uh, the fruit companies, the dry fruit companies, I would say that most of them are national companies. Thank you. I have two comments from the same person, Saba Singer. So maybe I will give you, uh, so I, I'll give you the floor to develop your two comments. Um, thank you so much. Hello, this is Chava Singer from Hybrid Airplane Technologies. Uh, we invented a new type of a pseudo satellite, which is a balloon type UAV uh, based on lighter than air, carries up to uh, three kilos of payload over five hours. Um, is it interesting for um, flora, fauna, agriculture, and uh, certain use cases to have a system that performs like a satellite, uh, but is 100 meters over ground, up to 500 meters, also for smart cities? Is this a field like UAVs, drones, that you are interested in? Uh, well... First, I'm not the one that's going to be interested, but the, the companies are going to be the ones. But I, of course, of course, everything that is related to, to more efficient use of, of, of different services, it's going to have a big impact here. Um, for, for instance, uh, some of the companies are already using drones. I didn't mention that in, the, in, the, in our, my presentation, but drones are being uh, used here. Also, there are some uh, municipalities within the, the uh, different cities that they have a strategy on a smart cities. So they want to develop better, uh, better things with, with, with that. Uh, for example, security, it's been uh, in some parts of, of, of the municipalities are being carried on by uh, ways to uh, monitorize uh, what, what the people is doing. Uh -huh. So yeah, we would like to come into talks, maybe in bilateral talks with you. I try to um, also add you in LinkedIn. I'm looking forward to that. Thank Perfect. you for the good talk, Christian. You're welcome, Seva. I, I have a question, yes. Um, 
I am from Ecuador. I'm based here in Ecuador. And I was wondering how's, how's the um, language barrier in Chile? For instance, in my company, I'm the only one that speaks Spanish. And I was thinking that, is it necessary to actually translate everything, all the documents we have, all the information we have about our company? Would it be uh, like a deal killer if I send out information in English or are people more open now um, when they are looking for technology, for innovation and things like that? In Ecuador, for instance, I would definitely need to translate because otherwise it could even look a little bit rude. How's the situation in Chile? That, that's a very good question, Carolina. Thank you for that. Uh, in terms of, well, it, it depends. It, it, it can be, I don't, I don't think that in, in any case it can be a deal killer, but it's most, uh, it's preferable if, if you translate that into Spanish. Uh, but in the, in, in the moment you're negotiating or you're presenting your services, you're going to be talking to the CFO, to the general manager, uh, and so on. And most of those people, they speak English, not, not all of them, but uh, for sure, it, it wouldn't kill your, um, your business if you send the information in, in, in English, but it's uh, preferable if you translate that into Spanish. Now, if you go to talk to the farmers, of course, Spanish, it's most needed. It's gonna be definitely needed there. Thank you. Come. Okay. Uh, Christian, I, I have a question. Thank you for your uh, presentation, quite interesting, even if it is very high level, but um, um, how, how do you think it will be uh, the relation with some local uh, uh, private investors or VCs, uh, are they willing to, or, or there are any state uh, investments that are boosting or accelerator or a mix of them uh, to support uh, uh, development of uh, various, I don't know, uh, solutions, prototypes, uh, because this, uh, this can be a good environment to build trust. Uh, exactly. And, exactly. and that, that will be interesting for, for us to, to learn a little bit more about that. Of course, we can discuss bilaterally, but for the group, I think it will be interesting as well. Of course. Well, in, in terms of the benefits or the subsidies that today, I'm talking today because, as I told you, the, the government will change from uh, March 11, and that can, that some of the incentives of, source of subsidies can change. Uh, I have the intuition that we will have more uh, tools to, to offer to, to foreign companies. Um, but what we have today is that all of the subsidies or incentives are put into the innovation part. Uh, if you come here and you set up a company and you try to prove something that is, hasn't been proved, you will receive some uh, incentives for that. Uh, most of them are uh, focused on the uh, tax credits that you can have. Those are tax credits mainly. Uh, in terms of uh, what, what ha what's happening with the VCs is that they're looking. They're, they, they're hunger and they're looking for new technologies here. Actually, this year, we're going to try to have one part of, of Chile, with one region, which is called uh, Rancagua, which is one hour driving to the south from Santiago that we want to uh, transform this city into the Arctic half of, of Chile, the Andean region, the Andean region half. Uh, pretty much what, what happens with uh, Louisville in, in the United States, where you will find all the Arctic companies, you will find all the uh, food producers company, uh, uh, Rancagua already has that, that part, but we're missing the connection with the government, the VCs, and we're putting all of the effort to have that within this year. So, uh, as I told you, they are looking for new ways to invest. Uh, we can have, uh, I can send you the, the information on some of these uh, VCs, so you can start talking with them. They can give you the their, what, what is their opinion, where, are the, what, 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 where they want to find new solutions, how much they're willing to invest. 
most likely the tickets are between 100,000 US dollars to 1 million US dollars, more or less. Yeah, thank you very much. It's it's a good it's a good information and it's a good start. And uh, whatever you have, you can share with us. And uh, of course, we can come back uh, with any other questions. Or thank okay. you very much, Christian. Yeah. Thank you, Alexandru. Christian, you have a you have a, a question in the chat. Is again, if you can repeat the name of the city. Oh, okay. I, I will write it down. Are there any more questions? Yeah. Yes, I would have one more question. Uh, what's the average size of a field or of a plot that is used for agriculture in Chile? Is it more like a small uh, farm holders or it's a more like large areas like in Argentina or Brazil? No, well, I, I can go again to the, um, let me, I will I will show you with the in within the presentation it was uh, look if I'm sorry it, this was uh, something that it was in Spanish but it's still what I'm oh, sorry oh, don't worry I will I was just tell you like this uh, seventy four to seventy five percent of the land here is less than 20 hectares. Um, that's one of the also challenges in terms of logistic because uh, and that's also a reason why we don't keep a lot of machinery to harvest because it becomes really expensive to move the machinery to one farm and then to the next one. But it, it, give, it gives you a lot of uh, control over what you're producing as well. Um, we are a very long country, but very skinny. I, I, I think the between the Cordillera and the Mar and the ocean, sorry, uh, the, the longest distance is like 300 kilometers. So it's uh, very hard to have very um, long or extensive uh, surfaces where you can uh, grow. Um, some kind of crops. Of course, there are some uh, parts where, where you will find more than 100 hectares, 200 hectares, but 74% is located like that. Thank you. Um, I don't see any for Jan, you want to follow up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you. Yes. Uh, I would just have uh, one more question. If you could just estimate what would be the adoption of, of observation within the within the food sector. Do you think that it's like 10% of the companies using some of observation products or it would be 50 or do you have any idea how, how the situation is? I, I will, that's a hard question and a very good question at the same time. Uh, I don't have the exact data, but I, I would say just uh, like a quick guess uh, around 10%. That's why there is an opportunity. There's, there is still an opportunity here. Thank Sorry, you. Sorry, I have another question. Um, in the mining industry, I know you, you, are, you are more in touch with agricultural side, but in mining, are these companies from Chile or are the, most of the companies international as well? In the mining sector, one of the largest is the national company called Codelco, but we have other several companies ex exploiting the, the mining industry, uh, which are the foreign companies. Okay. In, in any case, uh, if you want to explore other sectors, I recommend you to, to all of you that uh, we have uh, eBooks issue in the, the, the those are free download uh, ebooks. You can log into our the web page and uh, go to the different sectors that we have, and you can download uh, the ebook with information regarding and related to each sector. I'm going to take this last question um, mm -hmm. from Amit. Are there any field arable crops cultivated significantly? Uh, 
uh, means, in other words, can we assume it is all about the fruits in business? Uh, I didn't touch that part, but uh, of course, there, there is one part where you will find corn, wheat. Um, that, that's pretty much what we have. The thing with that sector is that uh, we're not exporter. So we're, we're basically importers of those kind of uh, crops. Uh, what, what is being uh, produced here, it's uh, used internally. Uh, we are import big part from uh, Argentina. Um, but I, I would say that maybe, I haven't explored that sector so much because the value added, maybe it doesn't, um, it doesn't pay the cost of, of having uh, this kind of technology, but eventually they will have to adopt Thank you. Um, thank you very much, uh, Christian, for your presentation. Um, I will close uh, this, uh, this, uh, this webinar. I just want to give you an announcement, publicity, uh, for, um, for our next webinar. So uh, our next webinar is going to be more a B2B series. So for our Connect to OSMEs, just stay in touch. Uh, next, uh, you will receive uh, the email uh, for next uh, for the next series of B two Bs, and also we will we will open it as well to other um, European SMEs, as uh, we have done it in this one. And the second announcement is that I encourage you again to apply for the open call that I'm going to send here in the chat. It is the call for the uh, uh, coaching services and as, as well matchmaking that is uh, promoting the, the European Commission, the EU Global Action for Space. So as well, I encourage you to apply. The deadline is on the 28th of February and there, there will be other series, but just go and check it out. And with this, I thank you very much for your time, for your interest, and we will be in touch. Um, please follow us as well on our um, uh, social media. And thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.